Okay. And why is that? Why? Yeah, like why, why, what's, what is your, like what's your hang up with an almighty God, I guess is what, is like, I don't understand why that's a, why it's concerning that people would believe that God is almighty. <laughs> I wasn't intending on getting into this. Okay. It's okay? Well, it's very nice of you to say that it's okay. You've come out onto the street with your holy books and your pamphlets and whatever else you've got, your prepared speeches and salesman patter to try to waylay somebody on the street and start talking to them about God. People just going about their daily business. And they're unprepared. Of course they're unprepared. You are, they're not. How nice of you. Hello, welcome back to The Simple Skeptic. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, hit the little bell, you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. And like or unlike, as I always say, it's up to you, but a like would be preferred. Yeah, this is uh, Apologia, Utah. And uh, they're out on the streets somewhere in Utah, I imagine. I don't know exactly where. And they've just accosted someone who's just trying to go about his daily business. He's going to do some shopping, but they want to talk to him about the good, the good book, the good word that, uh, you know, he's unprepared to, to tackle. And he tells them that. And uh, I'm not going to say that he hands them their ass, but it's pretty obvious that he doesn't fall for it. And he's very polite about it. Probably more polite than I would have been. And um, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's really not a great example of how to show your apologetics to the world because they fail in this one magnificently. Let's take a, a little longer look at it. Um, I just don't think that there is anybody like that. I mean, nature has its course. Not that God made it that way or anybody made it that way. It's just the way it progressed. Good. An argument from nature, natural origins, natural explanations. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. He came up with that quite quickly and uh, put it to them very succinctly. No argument. Okay, so you think, are you kind of like a naturalistic evolutionary, you know, the world? I, I, I would guess you'd put okay. it that way, yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on, you know, morality? Like people hurt each other all the time and God's minion number two has to come in now with his children to try to enforce some civility that really doesn't need to be enforced uh, it's a little intimidating to you know talk when you've got children there you can't really speak your mind and you can't really tell them where to go um, but uh, no this is this tactic gang up on them bring your kids in if you can make it look like a nice family affair uh, I think the second guy noticed that it really wasn't going too well for uh, the young fellow with glasses there, so uh, he wants to step in and just really put the boots to him. That most of us get angry when we see others, especially the people that we love oh, getting hurt, right? I, I think that's a good thing. That's natural, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way it should be. Uh, not do unto others as others have done unto you or whatever. So I don't think that... Uh, you know who said that first, right? No. Jesus. Jesus. He knows his Bible. Oh, no, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But I'm not saying I'm against the religion or yeah. his belief. I just don't believe that there is one supreme God or one God. Okay. And obviously there's all kinds of religions. Yes. Uh, all kinds of different gods, deities, whatever you want. Yeah, to no, I understand. <clears throat> so I just, that's why I just, I don't, I don't. You getting the feeling yet that they picked the wrong guy? I understand. So, from our perspective, I know you're gonna you're trying to catch a bus, so I'll, I'll just uh, keep it brief. I got to get to the store for it closes. But oh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll do this for a minute. Yeah. Well, what's your name? My name's Greg. Greg Eric. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Um, Greg, if I ever get to Utah and run into you, I am buying you a beer, maybe several. Love you. So, I believe that God has revealed himself to all of us in creation, in our conscience. That's kind of why I asked you the question about, like, we see people hurting, and it, we hurt with them. Like, we, we recognize that there's, there's bad there, that it's not good. You know, like you said, you think that's a good thing. So, I think based on our conscience and based on the creation around us, 
God has Maybe I should take back what I said near the beginning. This guy seems more prepared than they are. He's ready for action. We tell lies, we you know, exactly. steal, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, so we recognize that we as sinful creatures cannot stand before a holy God. And so we take the truth of who God is and who he's revealed himself through the creation around us and our own conscience. And we suppress that truth and we reject God for a God of our own image or we pretend he's not there or something along those lines. So um, our call is to, to turn away from that mind of thinking to trust in Christ because he is the one that can grant us peace with the one true and living God. There is one true God and he's revealed himself to you and, and uh, the Bible tells us that on the last day we will be without excuse. You know, we will stand before God and we will, we will be guilty before him for our rejection of him. So that was, that's what, that was what my plea would be for you, Greg, is to, to turn to Christ because the, the, you can you have think peace it's with your God. Soul. That's what you're trying to What's preserve, that? your soul. Well, soul uh, and body, etern eternally, we believe that there's going to be a resurrection but, but of the it, dead. It's still, it's your soul, even eternally. I mean, yeah. it's not, yeah. you can't yeah. see that, you can't touch that. Correct. But it's there. But it's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's up here. That's not. Well, it's, it's all connected, nothing. right? Body, flesh, body, spirit, and soul See, are all that, connected. See, that's your perceptive. Well, I don't believe that the spirit has anything to do with the body, my blood, my cells. You know. Do you think it's just kind of an ethereal, like, consciousness? Or, or what? Like, what do you mean? Is it just... It's only connected to you for a time, and then it, do, you, like, do you believe that? I, I, I'm saying a soul is not tangible. Correct. You can't hold it, right. you can't see it, you can't smell it. Man, he has taken them to the woodshed. <laughs> Show them how the game's played, Greg. But Jesus' resurrection, and this is something maybe to answer your question, but Jesus' resurrection when he died and rose from the grave was not a spiritual body. It was a physical body. You can't prove that he did that. Well, that I have scripture, though. There's scripture. Sure. Well, that has been written down and passed down. Sure. You know. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's oral tradition. You go tradition. to any accident and you ask all the witnesses, they're all going to have a different perception. Yeah, idea. Sure. and that's the whole and that's thing what about confirms, the Bible. And that's what confirms the Bible is that we have multiple. It. Well, no, oh, yeah, it let does. Me, let me let me prove it to you. So we have scripture, right? That was written, written down by, like you said, it was scribed and transcribed by many different people, right? Exactly. So, okay. So In different interpretations. Right. So so here's how we prove something to be true. We have different witnesses different writers, all writing from different perspectives about the same thing with differences in their story, right? And this guy with the hat fails to see that he just owned himself. Writing about the same thing with differences in their stories. Yeah, that's, that's impeccable. But all confirming. So if we, like you said, if we were out here on the sidewalk and someone was murdered and you asked each person, they would have a different perspective. But how did we co corroborate their story to find out whether a murder occurred and who did it? To, to, to add them all Multiple together. witnesses, right. To, uh, so what we have in scripture is over 5,000 different manuscripts, all pointing to the same message, the same truth, in that the gospel, and that's how we have our Bible, many different transcripts all coming together to have one consistent message. And what is the consistency in it? It's no, they don't all point to the same thing. And there's a lot that were left out. There was a lot that were kicked out by the uh, Council of Nicaea. There's all sorts of there's manuscripts out there, there's all sorts of things. Uh, it doesn't take a biblical scholar to understand that there are many contradictions, even in the ones we have remaining. And uh, there are many that just go against the, the Bible altogether. That's why they're conveniently left out. Perspective that everybody saw, but it's the gospel in what Jesus said, how one can be saved 
eyewitnesses proving that he did okay. resurrect? I None of those eyewitnesses wrote anything down. None of those eyewitnesses were interviewed by the people who later wrote down the story surrounding Jesus. And that didn't happen until long after his alleged death. I can believe in Jesus sure. as a person, okay. I, like you and I. Yeah, I, sure. can, I can accept that. And maybe him having some really good ideas. And what he's saying now is perfectly in line with what a lot of atheists think. There are many atheists who believe that Jesus was likely a real person, maybe a, a wise man, maybe a con man. But he definitely existed, according to many atheists. Uh, they accept the evidence. Myself, yeah, I'm on the fence. But uh, it doesn't really matter. He's willing to accept it, but he doesn't accept the divinity aspect of it. How I would like to live my life. Okay. I haven't always done that, but how I would none like to live my life. None of us have perfectly, how for sure. I would like to live my life, but I still don't put him as the son of God. You, okay. see, you see what I'm saying? I, I, I can believe in Jesus. I can understand that as a person. And he's tangible. I mean, he... He existed, obviously he existed, like yeah, you said, sure. and there's proof for it. But as far as believing in God, I can't make that step. He can't take that step. Good, refreshing honesty. So, we, you talked a little bit about, like, the spirit or the soul being intangible. You can't prove that it exists. I, I got to go get oh. some. All right, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You Have know, a good night. I, I would love to spend yeah. more time with this. Yeah. If you're around again, I'll get we'll you yeah. here. We're here on yeah. Thursdays. Have a good night, Greg. Did you get a track? Yeah, he grabbed one. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he did. You have a good night. Thanks for stopping. And if he does interact again, I would love to see that too. But something tells me that uh, Apologia Utah probably wouldn't broadcast another interview with Greg. Okay, uh, it's time for my stupid question of the video. Um, I'm getting most of these from a Facebook page called Creationism. And uh, posting the sort of silly questions and answers and diatribes and various other things that you quite often find on there. As I said in the last video, I'm going to keep them brief. I'll leave them up long enough for you to have a good laugh at them and uh, maybe come up with your own answers to people or just, just chuckle. Grab a drink, sit back, have a nice day.